join me to welcome to this podium, Dr. Nimula Kadiri. Can we put our hands together for you? I think we can do better than that. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's very, very difficult when you portrayed a session after lunch. And when everybody is looking forward to going home, especially in a very city like this city like Lagos, it's like to be the third most stressful city to live in the world. And we all know what is happening in Iraq and Afghanistan, right? War. So which war are we experiencing in Lagos? You tell me which war are we experiencing in Lagos? Because it's the third most stressful city in the world to live in. So, yes, I, I like the fact that when we're playing music, that kind of moved us a little bit. I don't know how many people got up and left the hall for 20 minutes and were asked to leave the hall. How many of us left the hall? Because for people, they didn't leave the hall. Is anybody sitting down here for the past three, four hours and they didn't move out? Is anybody that's been sitting continuously for like two, three hours and didn't leave it to us? Anyone? So I'm happy I'm not seeing any hands up. Uh, my cap as a physician will always come up like Why do you have to sit down for like three, four hours? Why do you move? Don't you know there's what they call deep vein thrombosis? Something can just happen, and once that thrombus is sent, it can go and block somewhere, and they will just have a sudden heart attack. So please, even if you are on the plane, get up and move. You are sitting there in a place like this. From time to time, move around. It's not about that person is fat, though. Because I know some people say it's for fat people. You can be telling them, and it can happen. So please move around. This is not part of my discussion, but it's part of self-care, right? Because we're talking about self-care versus work care. So move around. You are school owners, you are school leaders, you are you know, leaders in the industry. You're having those meetings, especially when we're talking about remote working these days, hybrid working, online meetings. Move. You are not a tree. We are going to deep dive into that. So my name is Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadri. I'm the medical director and psychiatrist in chief at Pinnacle Medical Services, which is a one-stop health and wellness center known for its innovative, preventive, and clinical approaches in the management of a wide range of mental health-related issues for individuals and corporate organizations. We've been running that organization now for over 13 years. Currently work with a staff strength of over 40 people and over 200 affiliates across Nigeria and Africa. We serve over 25 corporate organizations managing over 2 million Nigerians and their families under one of our services, which is called Employee Assistance Program. Our services range from preventive to treatment. So we have a work in hospital where people can be admitted. Do we work with schools? Yes. Absolutely. Before COVID, our data shows, because data is not emotional. Data drives anything. You want to know more about yourself when it comes to self-care? Do an audit on yourself. That's the only way you know. So data showed us that before COVID, we had less than 5% of young persons and adolescents visiting us. I have to manage myself before I can give to someone. And that is what? Self-care. Yeah. So in COVID, and now we are getting out of COVID, we have 25% of adolescents and young persons visiting our center. And I must tell you, Gen Zeners and the alpha generation, they are the therapy generation, and they are driving therapy. And that's why you see them from time to say, Mom, this is your talk is affecting my mental health. You know, that is the only way they can't really express themselves and it is good for you to listen, it is good for you to understand them. And so, my mandate is normalizing mental conversations by building a culture of compassion. I strongly believe it's high time 
we begin to normalize this conversation. Just when we talk about malaria, hypertension, diabetes. If for any reason now I have depression and she may be having hypertension, I'm not saying you have hypertension. Do you know that if I call up to 454 in this hall, it's not that you've offended anybody. It's not that a material had something has happened. It's not a spiritual attack. It's not your school owner that is doing juju to see that all the teachers in the school are not doing it. No. Your father, great grandfather, great 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 grand uncle had that potential. So there's a likelihood you will have it. Likewise, depression. So stop calling the witches and wizards in your village. Nigeria is not Nigeria. Everybody is looking for a way out. They are also looking for how to survive. My driving force is to live at home. Live to learn and to impact generations positively. If I don't give what I have, I'll be constipated. So I look for outlet to ensure that lives are impacted. Above, my pair, below, and from bottom up and down, up, down, up, down. It's important to find what drives you. When you wake up every day, what is that drive? What, what gets you kicking? Everybody has a drive and find that. So a scale of 0 to 4, how does change affect your holistic wellness? We know we have changes, so is it the national, if I say let us see national intent, how many of us can see Nigeria we hate? I can only count three hands. I will report all of you to team. Let's say what is the moment And you are saying by now you don't have to see Nigeria we hate. I see a rise of compassion. Somebody is telling that she can't sing it. Nobody sang it yesterday. We all learn, you know. We, I didn't meet that in primary school. Meet that old like this. I didn't meet that. So that means I'm not old, right? So the scale of zero to four, how does change affect your holistic wellness? Not at all extremely. One, we have four rows. I just want one person share from here. Zero to four. Who wants to share with both of them? We should be both. I'm talking to industry leaders. How does change affect your holistic wellness? We are talking about everything about you. Your physical wellness, spiritual wellness, your career, your family, your physical, your emotional, everything. How does change affect you? Yes, ma'am, what number? Okay, what age? What I'm going to go and test somebody. This is how it's doing. Uh, look at you. My Jessica. Everybody in Nigeria is affecting all of us. If you hear my own name, if you have a that's not that nonsense. <laughs> this is 2024. Let us normalize, not bringing up relatable issues when somebody comes to tell you about this or a problem. Stop it. It's part of self care. Stop it. It takes a lot of boldness and courage for somebody to come and tell you what is bringing more harm. And when the person comes, you have absolutely nothing to say. Be silent. It's part of solution. If you must say something, but it's not solution, I am here. It's okay. Not the one that's in here. It's because last time I told you to follow you to my church, you did not follow me. I see what When I told you to fast last time, you did not fast. Look at you now. Stop being apostolic towards people, criticizing and judging people. You have to end that in 2024. According to Dr. Medice of Constitution, who wants to speak for us here? Not drink you. Who she said something now? We are not going to play at it. This is like what? Three or forty-five slides. Let's say my slides may not get up to, but we get somewhere. She said that in case somebody comes to me and, and I have something to say. With regard to the person's um, situation, you should actually share. Mm. First, you must create a safe environment for people to come and share with you. Secondly, while the person is sharing, you must listen non judgmentally. Stop listening to respond, listen to understand. So you can understand the person's pain point. Because some of us already have answers, we are in a hurry to say, it's okay, it's okay. Hey, do this, do this. No. I'm taking a lot of 100 million naira. Will you pay me? Go ahead and pay the bank. No. But when you are finished saying everything, and you are satisfied, the person has seen 
finished speaking. You are satisfied. You even ask. Are you okay? Are you finished speaking? Okay. You know what? What have you done? Don't put start with your solution. What have you done? What are you doing? How can I help? Ask people how you can help. Because the thing is that if you bring solution, the person doesn't want solution. The person may just want to rant. The person is looking for who to just try to ask. It's not the person say, I've done this, I've done this, this is how I want to be. It's like a woman that has just been widowed. You think she needs food. She may just need help with her children. So where they can go for two, three days or one week. It's not that you just she, 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 she has not eaten. Let us give her food or ask. Ask that person, how can you help? Stop giving solution. So you can then not share if the person wants you. Don't just jump into it. Ask. So you know how the person wants. And if the person doesn't ask, you can then not ask. Is there any way I can help? You see, you see how you are breaking me down in stages. Before you eventually say, okay, this thing has happened to me at the point, this is what I did. I don't know which will be useful for you with what I've explained. No, it's not a one size fit all, but this is this. That way. And there are weekend we say, why are you in the hall? In the hall. Abuja people there. He said, no, Abuja person here. I could not Abuja. Thank God I will not be reported. So only Lagosians that we have here. Only Lagosians. What's that called? Quarry. What is the emperor? We first will tell you that the emperor will be. He has been dealing with his trauma people to you, Abuja. But he's doing a lot of work in Abuja. If you ask Abuja people, they will tell you that he's doing a lot of work. So we have quarry people. Lagos people, let me see your answer. Uh-huh. Worry people, let me see your answer. Which other state is represented here? Enugu, Enugu, let me see your answer. Which other state? Ibadan. Ogu State. Our neighbors here. Because sometimes you are paying taxes to Lagos, you are supposed to pay for Ogu State. Because sometimes you are on this side, this is Lagos, right outside. This is Lagos. And this is of your left hand side. I don't understand. <laughs> Let's move. So when you find yourself in such difficult situation, after Ecuador is extremely moderate sometimes, it's good for you to breathe. Last said, present to us, breathe. Don't let anybody suffocate you. And I will add, it's your absolute responsibility to be in charge of your self-care. Nobody is going to pray for you. Because you cannot give what you do not have. And you cannot operate from a place of deficit. And that's why I feel more for women than for It's not that men don't have issues, though. But the society has configured it in such a way that the women get a lot when it comes to nurturing. Because the women are natural, natural, bearers and rearers. So there's a whole lot. The women that are in this hall right now, I will tell you for free, they are considered breakfast, lunch, and dinner before. As they are here, they are already organizing things. Yes. Trust me now. Yes. They are moving mountains as we are here. Thank God for uh, uh, Pastor John's telephone. A lot. And I must tell you, women, for that, I don't want to forget, because I may forget later. You need more sleep because of that. You need more sleep, and your sleep must be uninterrupted than the men. And if people want to go on that topic, we'll be there for the whole day. The men have a natural way of building up their sleep, things that will aid their sleep with a uh, good sleep. Even if they are walking, even if they are moving around, as they are sitting down there, it's building up. But for we women, it's only when we sleep. So you need long hours of sleep, you need uninterrupted sleep. Stop being the, the unofficial security woman in your house. Many of you want to sleep by 8 p.m. By 8 p.m., that's when you move from room to room, check whether the children are breathing well. Open the fridge to check the menu for tomorrow. Yesterday, every day, tomorrow, they will tell you, what would daddy eat? What would the children bring? 
What is it? Meanwhile, that is the moment you have finished watching Channel TV or Arise. Honey, I'm going to bed. Mel, am I sleeping your mind? No, you know, you know. You know. You know. Leave me, please. So go and sleep for. Don't let your body sleep on you. That's a serious medical condition. That is if you survive it. Yes. Please let to sleep and let the sleep be uninterrupted. Sleep deep. The reason why some of you wake up in the morning and you feel as if you are going to a war is because when you sleep, your body mind and soul will not synchronize. So we need to sleep well. How body is a telemedicine platform. How body meaning how are you? We have to nationalize this telemedicine platform so that people can identify. We are the biggest black race, largest in the world. One out of every four black person you see is a Nigerian. If you are talking anything about youth today, our Nigerian name is not there, they have not started. Because we have the highest number, percentage of youth in a particular population in Nigeria. 60 to 70% of our population, they are young persons, and that is where you fall in as school owners, school leaders, industry leaders in the educational sector. As I me and my children are in school, I won't put them out and say I can do homeschool. I don't know if I can homeschool. Covid tested us a bit. Some of us nearly went crazy. Go to school, we still. Oh! Even the small online school, they say we should do. My children's school, they wrapped it up. Been in a quiet place, no distraction, no this. I said, this school, they not even ask whether I live in one room apartment. <laughs> Where all of us are crammed together. Why wow, there must be distraction? Where people be moving behind the child? Where the child be looking up and down? But we survived it. Congratulations, everyone. It makes, I, mean, I wanted us to do this exercise, but I don't know. Time is of the essence. I think I might have spent like 15 minutes on it. But this platform is on Google Play Store. Please download it. We have free 15, 16 assessments here. Free. Sleep is one of it. You download it, you send it, it will give you a link for your email because your results will send for you immediately. Anxiety is there, anger is there, depression is there, things regarding your children, they are there. And the beauty of this platform is that you can actually request for a culturally appropriate therapy. Ma, do you have children? Not yet. Don't say no. Manifest. My dear children, how old is the oldest? 16. Have you seen a pediatrician in recent times? Pediatricians are doctors that manage children, by the way. So, what does self care mean to you? But what self care is for him is different from mine, different from everybody. Some people that start to say that you want to sleep and don't talk to anybody. Lock the door, in that door. So people that have three delays and three fillers and moving from one wedding to another. So it is not in your jurisdiction for you to say, ah, this woman, you work Monday to Friday, go to go and rest, leave her home. That may be where she's finding joy. Leave people to, except you are seeing something that you tell, make you say, come, I notice this and I think you, you may need this kind of help. Not the one that, ah, she's always there for one moment, but oh, one so, but that is where they find joy. So self-care means different things to different people. But before we begin to start talking about self-care versus work care, I will talk about the work care first. One thing that we have found that prevents people from taking care of themselves well is stress. Is the word stress. The reason why you go to the hospital 90% of the time because of I feel stressed. I'm tired. You, you can't really describe sometimes exactly what is wrong. In fact, you may have treated malaria and then you're only in Nigeria that will choose malaria and typhoid. Stop it all. 
this 2024. There's something like malaria. <laughs> Plasmodium falciparum is the reason for malaria. Salmonella typhi is the reason for typhoid. What is, is there any similarity in those names now? The malaria and typhoid, malaria and typhoid. Only in Nigeria. Stop it! Stop it! Maybe it's hunger, so go and eat. Maybe it's rest, go and rest. Maybe it's a vacation, go for that vacation. Stop making that it's money, it's time for it's money. Right? So the reason why you go to this 90% of that is stress. The reason why you go to the community pharmacy, you go there, you buy this much, you buy that. Do not you spend more money there. Trust me. When you go to the pharmacy, I have this, I have this, but 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 I have this, this, is the reason why most of us are stressed. So for any reason you say, I am stressed, find out what is the S, the T, the R, the E, the second S, the third S, the E, and the T. Find out why. Sometimes it's you. Everybody is you except me. And you want to talk about what we have and self care. No. Sometimes because of your unresolved traumas. All resolved traumas make people to build on people that didn't hurt them. Because hurt people hurt people. So let us deal with our traumas. That's why some of us are, we are passing it on to generation. Using our children as scapegoats. Beating them and of course the way they beat this children, they don't like beating like that. African parents. So all resolved traumas, you know, like to do certain things because of you are dealing with your own traumas. It could be relationship issues. Our children are called it breakfast. Have you been saying breakfast? I said, I don't eat. I said, no, mom, that's not it. Breakfast. Have you had the broken before? I said, what do you mean? Explain. Now they have moved away from there. Now I'm like, your seeds, your seeds. My seeds, look at my seeds and composure. I'm giving 100%. You must know this land, see? Because the way they teach you that they carry us going where we know you. It could be economic or financial. Most of us are in this place. Your 100,000 is maybe like 10,000 naira now. You go to the market, you, it's one small nylon bag. You'll be thinking somebody stole, nobody stole your money. It's not that your money, what you are, what you took to the market couldn't take you home. I actually sat there in one shop before to check out my money gone missing. When I finished, I told somebody to me, I just went back to my car and drove home. I went to see first. So because the people has already started rising. I had my father quickly say, I didn't talk to anybody because I can just, you just collect. <laughs> you know that you are trying to tell me you just hey, hey, hey. I don't just tell me I said I was just doing as if I'm a good girl because <laughs> I couldn't understand why my 100,000 bought me just put it from the market if they take like that's when you know that yes we are here it's like a place you are flying from anywhere in Nigeria if your flight has not been delayed there's a possibility to be cancelled so when it's delayed just know that you will fly The only short flight is first flight. These days they have delayed. I thought they would never delay in Igbo until they delayed. They were telling us this price of flight right there. They are repairing, they are telling me they are repairing my flight. I want me to follow you. <laughs> I bought another ticket. I want to hear I want to sort this out. Man, don't worry. 130, 330, 530, 7.30. I say, eh? I will sit down and say, like, no, 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 I'm going to Lagos. So please, it's very important. Kobe is one showing. So I thought we were economic, right? Economic or financial reason. The second S is school and work, and that is where you come in. Whether it's school work that is the issue that is stressing you, whether it is your work with regards to how you are, your position in the institution, that can be the reason why you are stressed. The, the third S is sickness. Once one person is sick in the family, the whole family is stressed. Spiritually, financially, economically, everything. It may not be you. It may be your aged parents. It may be your partner. It may be your child. It may be your sibling. It may not be 
contributing money, but the role you will play can easily stress me. The E is environmental. I never like to where they are teachers. I am a nobody with that teacher's class for yourself. I can't be who I am today without being taught. Without going to school and without paying attention. And passing more. Because it was a long journey. <laughs> so, environmental issues. There are things that are not within our control. Inflation is not within our control. Change to the whole new national anthem is not within our control. Fuel subsidy is not within us. So you see, environmental issues could just be stressing you. Or it could be dealing with toxic workmates, work team members. They are not forthcoming. So when you, anytime you see the word stress, please ask yourself, is it me, the first S, self? Is it my past traumas, which is the T? Is it relationship, which is the R? Eight out of ten women that are in psychiatric hospitals, they are there because of relationship issues. That is why you must make sure you have healthy relationship. Don't let anybody box you into where, where you see that this, the place is not good for you. You are not a tree. Thank you, sister. You said move. Yes, you are not a tree. We are not saying we will, we will force you out of there, but understand. That's why self-care is important. When you, when you start practicing self-care, for a large extent, you are self-aware. You now know what it is, your strengths, your weaknesses, your triggers, your stressors. And then you can begin to know how to manage it. But the thing again, of course we are Nigeria. Do you know our biggest stressor? Nigerians, do you know your biggest stressor? Your biggest stressor as a Nigerian is the word Nigeria. Let me break it down for you. Do you want me to break it down? Yes. The N in Nigeria is narrow devaluation. Now, Naira to dollar is 1,400, 1,000, depending. One five. Dollar is about 1,819, depending on where you are buying. The R in Nigeria is insecurity, banditry, and kidnapping. Yes. The G is government policies that are not in with our reality. The E is electricity challenges. How many of us have 24 hours like in our house? With, with, with 24 hours like you know how much you are paying. The R is road network. We know the kind of road we pass through when we are coming in today. Some of us, the reason why we set up two hours before the time we came here because the road network was bad, right? The I in Nigeria, the second I is inflation. Where your one million is maybe like one hundred thousand, and your hundred thousand is maybe like ten thousand. Cumulatively, when you look at the N I G E R I, people are angry. That is it. That is why you beat your head to charge the money. Good money, my daughter. Speak about the money. She's not fighting with you. She's fighting with her. So stop calling for pity but when people are angry towards you. They are dealing with a lot of issues. You want to know how Nigeria is not Nigeria. Just stand and look at the way people are driving on the roads. For school owners here yes, that parents drop their children. When they come to drop their children, you see how orderly they are. They will even say, we can pass. We can not. Because they have to show good example. Just let them turn like this. Boom. And they are not longer looking at me. A lot is happening to us. So you as a Nigerian, you have to do what is very important for you. So that you can take care of yourself. It must come from within. No doubt. If inflation is inflating, what can you do to make sure you reduce your overhead cost? Unless food do not pay taxes. Who own us? Sorry, sorry, sorry. What is the name of taxi to pay? FRS. So schools are paying now. I thought schools are NGOs. Inflation. This is pretty bad to chat kidnapping. E. Electricity issues. R is for the poor network. So you pay taxes. So sorry. 
it's important for you to start managing your stress level in the workplace. The school has been designed in such a way that there are breaks. Why are you not taking breaks? There's lunch time. Why are you not taking breaks? Somebody say, ha! Ah, no break. You are marking. So you see all the time you'll be marking. They had one week break. Somebody said you could have one week break. That's why the person is like a man. You are here. It's not going to care tomorrow. But it's part of it. Part of the school work. Are you marking here? You sleep here. When you go home, sleep. You have 24 hours in a day. A good way to monitor your sleep is know how many hours you sleep. If it's six hours, the remaining 16 hours, to thought of it, you are using it to work. To talk, you are spending it in the workplace. That's why most times you may not have time to sleep, right? But when you are, when it's time to sleep, I will talk about that, I will make sure I get to that time. Sleep! Please, because too much stress, this is how it looks. It goes on, up, up, up. Before you get to this help, you may be needing admission, medication. That's if you are allowed to say your story. Stress kills. And so when you're talking about work care and self-care, you must know your stressors. Sometimes human beings are your stressors. I hope you know that. So you now know how to manage them. And that is where we talk about boundaries. How are you setting boundaries to help yourself? It's part of self-care. Somebody wrote me a letter, uh, sent me a WhatsApp message yesterday. By the way, like, WhatsApp is my least mode of communication. But I was online so I could see, I saw where she dropped the message. He said, oh, Dr. May, she's a very dear friend, very. Oh, I have a group of women who talk to, I talk to, I bring the guest speakers every month to speak to them. And in this month of June, I want you to speak to them. I responded to myself, thank you, we greet them, we exchange pleasantries and everything, the family, work and everything. I said, we're already in June. Are you, do you mean June 2025? Or June 2024? He said, this month, like I said, no, it doesn't work like that, my dear. Ability to say no is very important. I said, no, you must give me at least three to six months ahead. And my calendar is already booked to 2025. And as a dear friend, you should know this. But because you are my friend, you don't think I can, you can just, no, it doesn't work like that. No. And I'm not apologetic about it. I don't even feel bad about it. You must get to that level in life. But as you are working now with an organization, there are times you can't say no. But what are you compensating with? Why you get the work done because of your KPIs and deliverables? How are you ensuring that the time you have, you are doing something that is important to yourself? I tell every employee, you do 9 to 5 with somebody. When you get back home and you're not putting in one or two hours for your personal own upskilling, continuous learning, you are lazy. Let's go, let's, let us say it as it is. We are in 2024 where you must upskill. You must do something for us so and then we'll take you from point A to point B. Take you to the permanent side. What is taking you? This is what it does to the body. My whatever is not working. Yes. Oh, sorry. Because at the end of the day, if you do not manage your stress well, you will get mentally unstable. This is the reason why one out of every four Nigerian we have a mental health issue in their lifetime. I'm not saying you have right now. You may already be dealing with. It may be before. It may be now. It may be in the future because of the word stress. Could be relationship, could be economic, could be anything. But as it is right now, one, two, three, five. I jump for one, two, three, four, five. The five of them sitting down there, they don't know what I want to say. The people sitting, their demeanor has changed. Yeah. Because this is what I want to see. I will still say it anyway. If people look, look at me with bombastic side eye, I will still say it. The one, two, three, four, five. As they are sitting down here right now, one of them is currently depressed. It's not me. 
it's statistics. And, and when, we, when I say this in every room, they're like, ah, no, look at them, they're fine. It's because we assume that when people have mental illness, they're on the streets. No! The people on the street, they're just, they just 1% of people that are mentally unstable. Only 1%. So 99% is us. And if you be in any of my room, I call it one name. It's called package madness. <laughs> we are all well dressed. Nobody will know what you are dealing with. And because you are school owners, you have children in school and everything, you need said in 2021, one out of every six young person is currently depressed. And so, please, I beg of you, as parents in this room, when your child comes to tell you that he or she is depressed, I'm begging you, stop saying no, it's not possible. The enemies are watching me. I knew my mother in law. Oh, God. Ah, the enemies are finally. Nobody got you. And stop pulling out everything you have done for them. They know. Do you know how much I pay for your school fees? You have a roof over your head. Over 10 million Nigerian children are on the street. They are not out of school children. You eat three times a day. You go on vacation. You have clothes. They know that these are moments. Or they need therapy. Because half of all mental illnesses start before the age of 14. Half. And to talk before the age of 24. So your 10 year old child can be depressed. That boy in class that you. you so did you start noticing things about that child in your class, in your school? Please find out what the issue is. And I like the fact that we have guidance and counselors in school, but they are not all fully. In fact, they are part of the ecosystem. They have the limitation of what they can do. And when we did our researches in school, we found out that a lot of children don't go to school counselors. There's a problem there. I will need to look into it. But I'm going to ask and say, no, they will go and be telling other teachers. They will go and tell my parents in a way that my parents will think I'm the one at fault. They will announce it. They will announce my name in their service. No! You should be a safe space for that child. Where he or she feels safe enough to communicate, that is confidential, that is free from judgment, criticism, and for heaven's sake, don't be apostolic towards that child. So it's very important. How so mental illness is important? It's intrinsically linked to our physical health. So when you are talking about oh my physical health, know that your mental health is dead because there's no till, there's no light, they are moving together. It's not fake news, it is real. But mental health is not mental illness. Why all of us all here yeah, we all have mental health? We do not all have mental illness. That's why I wrote that those statistics. One in four we have in their lifetime. One in five is currently depressed now. One in six children, out of six children, they are currently depressed. He or she. So all of us all have mental health, but we do not have mental illness. And these are the studies that we are having. Why I particularly brought out this slide? Because depression is the, the disease. Out of all the diseases you know, including the ones you do not know, it has the highest burden of disability worldwide. Why some of us look, think, and think and feel that disability is about people that are on wheelchair, people that are using stick to walk, people that are blind, people that are deaf, people that cannot talk, people that are on you know, on the bed, maybe paraplegic, hemiplegic. Depression is worse than that. Because it affects your productivity, affects your self-esteem, self-worth. It can make you suicidal, it can make you to kill yourself. Most of the cause is depression. So it is high. So work and mental health. So when you are talking about work here, you must understand and prioritize your mental health. Know what you are dealing with. Do a self-audit. Know what the challenges are. Is it the school environment out of the stress factor that is the problem? Is it not is the place no longer serving you? What can you start begin to start doing differently? So people they say, oh Mondays I'm not feeling happy. Oh, this one, that one. Have you changed the mode you dress? Mondays are said to be the saddest day of the week. That's why people don't look forward to 
for Mondays. Oh, it's Monday again. But on Mondays, tell yourself I want to be happy. And genuinely walk towards that. Wear your best clothes. Hope that's not also. Stop keeping clothes for special location. Every day is a special location. We don't know what is coming in the end now. Wear your best clothes. Two thousand lipstick jar. If you're a man, wear that red tie. Look back. Let your sneeze and compose your bitch. Sneeze in. You will see, you will find out that that one day will be good. Because truly, every day you wake up, you know you are deliberately looking for ways to be happy. The moment your eyes open like this, I'm seeing Nigeria. <laughs> so please ensure you look for ways. My slides are up for it's connecting. Look for ways to be deliberately be happy. But when we look at ways to work on work here, I want to take us through. That's why I want this slide because I want us to capture each one. There are seven ways I want us to intentionally look at how you can begin to take care of yourself and how you can begin to look at self-care and work care. The first rule is doing a life audit. That is, mommies, uncles, aunties, do a life audit. Why is it going to happen? Is that where I am? No. Where am I? Okay. No, let me sell my market first. Are you involved? This book, I launched it July 21st, 2021. It's on mental health with particular reference to depression. It's a good to have. Hey, let me ask who has read this book? This book? Nobody. Today is a sad day for me. Nobody in this room. You want to say something? No. Nobody has read this book. This book that we are carrying to next is like this. It takes no more than two to three hours because it's a story to read. It's a game starter. When you want to know anything about me, like start that conversation. You want your students to know about me, let them read it. Calling somebody, sometimes I've been to schools where we have that assembly, like it's evening time, you sit there in the hall and have a discussion. Let them talk about their mental health. As parents, you can begin to use it to start those conversations. Let them understand what it is. And because they have questions for you there too, as a parent, it ask you questions intentionally. Because when Brenda died, her sister Joy couldn't understand what she was dealing with. She eventually got depressed and was hiding until the, the mom, the dad, people around first and she went for therapy. And because we are in Nigeria, that is no one to hear that. The daddy didn't never understand why he needed grief counseling. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. I really enjoyed the session. Um, I want to ask this question. Uh, when we are talking about self-care and maintaining a healthy um, work life in a working environment, how can one balance up when you suddenly realize that in, um, in a working environment you have become the go-to person because you are a good listener, you like to solve um, people's problems. Then you discover that everybody tends to bring their problems to you. And they now feel entitled to your time. They feel entitled to your to your energy, to your responses. So when you say no, they get angry. So how can one balance up? Thank you. Do you want us to take all the questions before we answer, right? We only have one question. Only one. You see where who can relate to that that question? It may not even be the school environment, no, it may be your circle of influence, your friends. It may be your neighborhood. It may be your siblings. One thing, sister, you have to begin to do today. Today, set boundaries. Set, you see, I told them, I didn't say I'm not doing I said, this month of June, my free um, webinars for free are already taken. This is one of them. I didn't fight her. I just told her that. I just give me three, six months ahead. 
fact, we can and work with my time. And you said it's every month, and you are coming in June to come and give me. No, don't be angry. But are uh, angry that you didn't give them that set. If you three to four every day, you want to give that free time. Let them know three to four. Give that time hundred percent. Not every two two seconds. You know what? Your work is suffering. That's not your primary work. And that is additional stress on you because those people will not close and leave. She's still there. You will not be wondering why she says, uh, why, why is she angry? Why is she not giving? Uh, I want to talk to you. I'm no. You have a good skill, madam, which is active listening. Have you ever thought of, of skilling on that? As a you are a teacher, right? You are not a professional counselor. And you do not intend to be a counselor. That is money you are living on the table. But most importantly, please set boundaries. I have boundaries, so let me tell you, I have boundaries even with my parents. My daddy and mommy can't call me after 9 p.m. No. Your boundaries are not for you to keep up. When you set boundaries, communicate them. I thought there's no call me after 9 p.m. That time I'm winding down to sleep. Except it's a life threatening situation. And I give two, I will give you room for two times for you to misbehave. So after now you are calling and you are just thinking about our neighbor. Do you know that neighbor? Huh? The fact that God died. After now you stop, I will not sleep. I will not be thinking, hey. <laughs> you know, some things happen. You do it one second time, do it the third time, no. And we are coming back from that time. No, you said after nine, we are not. My children, after 10 p.m., we don't have conversation, except it is something that is a life threatening situation. You are walking into my room. Then now it's 10 o'clock. Oh, mom, it's not so important. Tomorrow we continue. You must set boundaries. You must. And that's what I'm saying. I don't feel like, ha ha. This money. It's not that like, I'm not wicked. It's not tough. It's not that I'm. No. You must. Because she's coming now. She's coming. Is this something that is so. And you, because you have communicated it, they won't think that it is a bad thing. They will have discussed everything they wanted to discuss. Let me tell the shop for to just come and see. I said, come on, let me give you a hug. Is that what you want? He said, yes, but let me go tomorrow. But that is it. So set those boundaries. And you ask me that, do I have boundaries in my house? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so please set boundaries. Yes, yeah, you do, you must. Spiritual boundaries, physical boundaries, emotional boundaries. Set those boundaries and communicate them to the appropriate quarters and people that need to know and need to hear. My father is shouting on our family for example. You know that or not, after night here, you cannot call and say, ah, that is, she, 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 she told you, yes, yeah, she told me, oh. so please, in case anything, people should send that text message. Say she does, she's not good on WhatsApp. Communicate it. You will have peace from today. Just make sure you do that. Thank you very much, ma. Please.